first to enter the den is fitness fanatic Rob Thorpe. I absolutely love exercise. I'm very cognizant of health, wellness, fitness. It's a huge part of my life. And to put an extra zip in his step today, Rob's been sampling the very goods he's asking for an investment in. I've taken my product this morning. I'm feeling sharp, I'm feeling energized, and I'm ready to go. Rob's hoping to give his business a boost too by bagging a dragon. And there's one in particular very much on his radar. Vitamins. Oh, this should be interesting. Tej has a vitamin empire and great retail connections, and he could be particularly powerful for my brand. Hello, dragons. I'm Rob Thorpe, and I'm the founder of Vite. We're a functional nutrition brand, and we help students and busy professionals improve their performance and their productivity. We're best known as a brand for our nootropic line, Vite Brain, which is currently available in capsules, drink mixes, and soon-to-be snack bars. For any of you that don't know what a nootropic is, it's an ingredient that can enhance cognitive function, so memory, reaction time, and mental energy. We hope with this line to be the first brand that can bring the benefits of nootropics to the mass market. We've been selling Vite for 18 months, during which time we have generated £160,000 in revenue. And I'm here today to pitch for £45,000 in exchange for a 10% equity stake in Vite. And now I'd like to get some samples out to you and answer any questions that you have. Supplements to improve mental performance is the business brainwave of London-based entrepreneur Rob Thorpe. So if you'd like to take a tray and then one of the tubs. He's asking for £45,000 in return for 10% of his company. The caffeine profile in any of these is about the same as a home-brewed coffee. Peter Jones is first to quiz the MD on a mission to optimise the mind. Well, firstly, well done. You know, you've got a seemingly a business here. The drink, is that made out of the powder from yes, here? Yes, it is, yeah. So inside there, there's 30 servings. Just add it to water? Yep. OK. And it's fairly competitive, isn't it? There's a lot of these types of products on the market. Uh, no, not in this niche. I mean, there's a lot of health products on the market. Um, what we intend to do is be the first brand to bring nootropics into the supermarket, health food stores and local convenience stores. OK, so can you give me the last 12 months of sales? Yeah, so 105,000 in revenue. Uh, gross profit was 45,000 and we are net 5,000 for the year. OK, and what did you do before this? I was working very long hours as a financial trader and I started to research what I could implement in my own diet to improve my performance during that time. And then you've given that up completely to do this? Completely, yeah. Wow. And, and at the moment, um, how many hours a week are you spending on this? Five days a week. And that's not an eight-hour day, that's yeah. a 10, 12, 14 hours a day. And how are you living? Uh, so I have a second business, which is a two days a week e-commerce agency. And what does that turn over? This year we'll do about £100,000. <gasps> Whoa! So you're a serial entrepreneur? Yes. And how old are you? Uh, 26. Congratulations. At 26? You know, I, I admire, respect young people who really got a vision. Tuka Suleiman discovers the ambitious entrepreneur has serious business credibility by running a separate venture with a six-figure turnover. Sarah Davies now wants to get down to the nitty-gritty of Rob's markup on his cerebral stimulants. So what does this sell for? What does this cost you to make? £30 for that. It's 30 servings. And that costs us to manufacture £4.50. And at the moment, you are still 100% shareholder? I'm 85% shareholder. So the other two shareholders own a branding and marketing agency. And for 15%, they contracted £130,000 worth of work to Fuelvite. So that's content creation, marketing, uh, website design. Did they do the bit that says you can't read any other writing on this packaging? Did they brand that bit? They did. I haven't heard of any struggle reading the packaging. Really? Come and read something for me off the back of this, then. Come and read that for me. 
Okay, so store in a cool place away from heat and moisture, used by the expiry date. Darn he can. <laughs> Darn he can. I would point out they are sample packaging. Well, how much of that have you got? Uh, six units in that packaging. Few, yeah. because I think the first thing you need to do is make it readable. Actually, you probably wouldn't get away with that because information that you have to have on the back of a packet yeah. has to be easily readable, not... Yeah. I mean, that is diabolical, isn't it? I can just barely read it. You can't see anything on it. I, n I note that and I'm willing to take it on board. Deborah Meaden spots a potential problem with the entrepreneur's packaging of his product. Tej Lalvani has made his millions in vitamins and health supplements. Does he have a regal welcome in mind for a possible new pretender to the throne? Rob, Tej. I happen to know a company that begins with the first three letters of this as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, you're an enterprising guy and, um, you know, well done for setting something up like this, but supplements for the brain, they've been around for a very long time. Um, you know, we ourselves have got a brand which is I know it, yeah. now one of the number one supplements for cognitive function in the country. Yeah. So I don't see why this is new. So we're bringing the benefits of nootropics in different form factors to the mass market. Um, we, we do sell ours nationally in, in, in all retail outlets mm. as well. So it, it is available. I also think it's quite expensive. £30 is a lot of money for someone to spend on this. What exactly is your target market? Because there's lots of products in retail already, a lot cheaper, a third of the price than yours. So our target market would be busy professional students who are picking up an energy drink, a coffee, and one pound per serving is significantly cheaper than a coffee or an energy drink. Well, I actually wouldn't compare coffee with that. You're providing a health supplement which is very different. But that's the only solution that's out there at the moment for customers. It's not the only solution, though, is it? Because there are a lot of competitors on the market. It's interesting, because Tej has said what he said, but he's still in. Tej is a smart man. He is a smart man, <laughs> and that's why I'm thinking here, well, if it is good, we could come out with it and go, right, get the brand point, let's call it Vitabionic. It's like superhuman, superhuman. for your brain. I'm just going to maybe sit quietly and wait to see what Tej does. Peter Jones wonders if his fellow dragon might have a surprise in store and decides to play a waiting game. But it appears Deborah Meaden isn't sold on the supplement proposition. So far from you, I haven't heard a compelling reason why this is going to succeed. I'm not keen on the branding. I've heard that the pricing isn't fantastic. I would push back on the pricing part. We are very competitively priced online. They're well okay, reviewed well, but at I'm, price I'm comparing point. what you're saying with the market leader. So I admire you for pushing back, and I would expect you to push back, but I'm afraid I'm going to listen to Tej. It's just not an investment for me. OK. So I'm sorry, I'm out. Deborah Meaden defers to the industry experts' misgivings about the product and becomes the first dragon out. But has Sarah Davies been swayed by the acumen for business that Rob has demonstrated? You are really impressive as an entrepreneur. The bit that I feel a bit uncomfortable about is... ..if I pick this up off a shelf... Hmm. Not only would I not pay £30, but I don't think I'd want to put them in my mouth. I don't really know what I'm eating, what I'm doing here, and I think I can overcome that when it's a really big brand. Hmm. But I'm just looking and I'm thinking, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just not speaking to me. So, um, as great as I think you are, this one isn't an investment for me, and uh, I'm out. Sarah Davies can't get her head around Rob's brain boosters and ends her interest. With Peter Jones keeping a very close eye on proceedings, market leader Tej Lalvani is ready to give his final verdict on his potential competitor's product. Look, um, I just think that this market is very competitive right now. You haven't got anything that's unique. And when you go to retail, you're going to have a lot of competition. Absolutely, yeah. And it's and going to be tough to stand out. Possibly in the UK, but we have um, the product approved to sell in Germany, France and the US, which are the other three largest nootropic markets. 
US has got a thousand products in retail already. So I think you're going to find it tough in America. Germany is a very tough market to enter. It's a very different market to the UK. So look, I think you're a good business for yourself online. I don't want to deter you because it's good for the market and people yeah. to understand about it. But I'm going to say I'm out. Okay, Tej, thank you. So Rob, I think um, you've happened to pick the very business today um, of somebody that rules the roost when it comes to that marketplace. And I had to listen to what he said. Mm. So on the back of specifically Tej's feedback, it's not going to be something that I'm going to put my money into. So I'm going to say I'm out. Peter Jones follows Tej Lalvani's lead and exits the discussion. Tuka Suleiman is now the entrepreneur's only hope for investment. Is his brain fizzing with a possible offer? Rob. It's on you, Tuka. Oh. Don't worry. I'm not influenced by other dragons. I'm Tuka. My own dragon. I really, really like you. Yes. And it's very apparent that there's a brand there. Um, and, and I like it. And I like to give other dragons a bit of a run for their money, right? The market is big enough for everybody. The market's so, huge. I'm going to make you an offer. But it comes at a price. I'm going to give you all of the money, that's £45,000, but I want 40% of the business. Still gives you control, but more than that, you will have the greatest experience of your life working with me. I don't doubt that. It's a lot more than what Do I Do you want to go and think about today. it? About what? I, I've done a lot of thinking before I've come in the den. Um, it, I can't push that high. I can't push near that high. The absolute most I could go to is 20%. So if you take me on 20%, we have a deal. No, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what it is. There's a lot to do here. And I'm not offering you just a passive investment where yeah. I see you once a month and mentor you. I'm offering you much more than you could ever imagine. Mm. I do appreciate that. So I do appreciate that. I, I, I would, the least I'd go to is 35%, and that's my last offer. I do have belief in myself, but I also have a lot of belief in this brand and where we can take it. So I can't give away that much. I think that for what's involved and what I'm offering, my offer's fair. You've got one last chance to think about it. You've got five seconds to change your mind. Change okay. mind, From that basis, thank unfortunately, you. I'm out. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Good luck. Good luck, Rob. Thanks, Good luck. Thank you. Entrepreneur and investor are too far apart, and Rob leaves the den without the £45,000 he was seeking or a dragon to supercharge his setup. When Tuka made me an offer, it seemed like a lifesaver, but it was a dagger to the heart when he said 40%. Oh, it's really good that you made him an offer. I, th I think he's a smart guy. Well, I, I was backing him. However, he was narrow-minded. You had a chance to compete against me, Tuka, but you didn't do it. It wasn't the day for the brand, but I'm absolutely going to make this a success, and I'm more than willing to take Tej or anybody else on in this sector. Next into the den is Sussex-based serial inventor Stephen Ransom. I sit down and look at what problems there are in an industry and then try and solve it with technology. I hope that they see the quality and the thought that's gone into the product. Hello Dragons, my name is Stephen Ransom and I'm here today to ask you for a £90,000 investment in return for a 20% share in our business Brighter Bikes. The Brighter Bike Indicating System is a wireless indicating and braking system that fits easily onto any handlebars 
onto any helmet, seat post or any backpack. The cyclist can now for the first time indicate right, indicate left and brake. We have a patent on the key aspects of the design and we have an EU design patent pending. We are looking for a dragon or dragons to help us bring this system to a potentially worldwide market. Thank you for listening and would you like to see the product? An indicating and brake light system for bicycles. Put your helmet on. Yeah. Yes. Is the offering from Stephen Ranser. Okay. Oops. Oh! Who's looking for £90,000 in return for a 20% share of his business. Yeah, okay. Break a bit, break a bit, break a bit. Yeah, break. So Oops. Oops. Oh, yeah. Tej Lalvani wants to know more about Stephen's Eureka moment. Hi, Stephen. I'd like to find out about your background. How did you come about this invention and what did you do before? OK, um, my business life started in 2004. I was following a truck that was having real difficulty in reversing into some factory gates. And I asked the driver if he had any aid to help him reverse. And um, he said, the guy who invents something for me for that is going to be a bleep, bleep, bleep millionaire. And that gave me the idea to begin a business installing cameras and proximity sensors into large trucks. And did you become a millionaire? Uh, not yet, no. Okay. <laughs> but this business here grew out of that. Are you the only company doing indicator lights for cycles? Well, a lot of the systems out there, they haven't thought about handlebar array. There isn't one single indicating system that has a little button on each side. So existing systems don't have the indicator buttons on the handlebars, what you're saying? No, there's nothing out there on the market that does what this system does to the same degree of simplicity and high visibility. So, manufacturing price? Um, £63 at the moment because we are, we are manufacturing in the UK. Um, selling price? Uh, £145. The price of Stephen's product has set alarm bells ringing in the den. And retail magnate Tuka Suleiman is concerned that persuading ordinary cyclists to buy it could be an uphill struggle. Steve, what I'm trying to get my head around is I think if you said to me, we're selling it for £69, that then gives you a product that you can go out to the market yes. and, and sell in volume or even yes. online. This is just one arm of the business that we see because another huge market that is developing is called Last Mile, which is where supermarkets are looking to use e-cargo bikes in order to make their last mile deliveries. We want to be first in the market in a potentially very large indicating and braking market for cycles. So what are you predicting that you'll sell then in year one with my investment? We want to sell 1,000 units, but then we would hope with those 1,000 that have gone out to all the key decision makers, traction has been drawn from our website, we would hope to sell 10,000 in the second year. That's what we're hoping for. I'm struggling to get convinced about the demand for this product. And I feel like we're grasping at potential sales figures for the future when we talk about year one having a thousand units out with influencers yes. and then going tenfold. I would call that fanciful projections. My experience in the other business that we have is that proven technology usually drives legislation. Already in Holland, it is obligatory for faster electric bikes to have braking lights. Well, if you're waiting for legislation to make a sales push for you, I wouldn't if I were you. You need to create a product that, uh, that there's a real demand for. You're a great inventor, but I'm not sure we've hit quite upon the one that's really going to make us millions. Wish you all the best, but I'm out. OK. A letdown for Stephen as the cash point queen punctures his hopes of investment. Will Deborah Meaden get things back on track?
I actually think legislation is the driver. As soon as people sniff legislation on the horizon, mm. that's when the marketplace starts hotting mm. up. Already in, in the Netherlands, most indicators and brakes are put on the rear, either on the rear mudguard or on the seat post. And so this will mirror that exactly. That could be an issue, Stephen, couldn't it? Because if that's legislation, every bike manufacturer will incorporate that into their bike as standard. So we could go down the next 12 months developing the product. Yes. But actually, in two years, your product becomes obsolete. We don't let that phase us. Five or six years ago, when we were in the camera industry, you would say that the market hardly existed, but now, nearly every truck comes with camera systems and sensor technology. We want to be known as the people who can solve bicycle indicating and... and, yeah. and I mean, Stephen, look, your, your biggest threat really is legislation, I believe. When that does happen, bike manufacturers are definitely going to go straight towards developing their own systems on the bike, which means you may struggle. So, on that basis, I'm going to have to say I'm out. Okay. You mentioned about your other company. You must have some big customers. Yeah, we do. Um, so who, who would they be? Well, our first customer was fantastic, was Tesco. Oh, right, okay. Um, Sainsbury's. We supply cameras and screens to Sainsbury's. We also um, supply Stobart. And um, last year, as a business, we turned over 1.4 million and we had a net profit of 385,000. So Stephen, you've come for an investment for a business that doesn't exist. You've invented a product that's still unproven because you haven't made any. No. So for 90,000, could I invest in your main business and include this in it? <laughs> Do we even go to the wall on that one? Yes is the answer. Good. The entrepreneur's willingness to offer up a slice of his already successful business as part of any investment has whetted Tuka Suleiman's appetite for a deal. And Deborah Meaden seems impressed by Stephen's business achievements to date. You have actually got a track record of a good nose, I call it. Thank you. <laughs> and I've got a good nose. I, you know, it's just that thing that thinks, something here. And actually, once you're part of a field, you can actually start driving the legislation. That, to me, is the big piece of work here that says, actually, we can be part of this, which I find quite exciting. So I'm going to make you an offer, it is for the whole company. And I will recognise the fact that you've got a business that's already making a profit of £400,000. It wouldn't be right of me to ask for 20% of that business. I'm going to do a very unusual thing. I'm going to offer you £90,000 but I want 15%, lower than the percentage you've asked for, but I want it for the whole business. Okay, thank you. I don't know what to say. <laughs> An offer, all of the money in return for 15% of his entire business. Stephen may be at a loss for words, but Peter Jones most definitely isn't. Stephen, um, I really like the product. Thank you. The other thing is, I actually really like your other business. I think there's real innovation to come, actually, and there's a huge market potential definitely, there. Definitely, yeah. Really exciting market. And it really doesn't surprise me that Miss Meaden has stepped in straight away because she sees the bigger opportunity. I was almost hoping that she would say a slightly larger percentage. But she didn't. So, 
Stephen, I'm going to offer you all of the money for your whole business for 15%. So the same as Deborah. Yeah, it's funny that. Yeah. I'm going to make you an offer, but I'm going to make it in a different way. I don't want to feel that you've come into the den and I'm taking advantage of getting to your other business. So. I'm going to offer you all of the money, but I only want 10% of your main business. And I want this to be a separate business, but I want 40% of that because I'm going to add a lot of value to this. So 10% of the main business and 40% of this? Yes. Okay. Three competing offers are now on the table. Two identical, £90,000 for 15% of the whole business, and one very different. The time has come for Stephen to signal his intentions. Um, I've read all of your backgrounds. And uh, I would love to say I'd love to take all three of you but the two people most prominent in my mind were Peter and Deborah. Please don't take that the wrong way, Tuka. Steve, I guess on that basis, you don't really want me investing in your business, so I'm out. <laughs> well, it would be wrong to say that, Tuka. Yep. Concentrate on us, because that's fine. Concentrate on us. Well, then, would you two be able to work together? I would be happy to offer you half the money for 7.5% of the whole piece. Yes. And I'd be happy to offer you half of the money for seven and a half percent. I'd be delighted to go ahead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Brilliant. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Peter. Well done. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you well done. Uh, personally, I think you made an excellent choice there. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Well Brilliant. Done. Success for Stephen, who rides away with two business pace setters, and that small matter of £90,000 tucked safely in his saddlebags. I've been on a roller coaster and just elated, can't quite believe it. I'm surprised. I thought there's no way we're going to get it. I hope that makes you feel better. <laughs> it's real, it's happened. <laughs> I've got two investors. What am I worried about? Not much, I don't think. They're probably going to say some nasty things about my business, I expect. But I'm pretty confident that uh, I know most of the numbers. Heat of the moment may well mean that those slip out of my head. But we'll see what happens when I get in there. Hello Dragons, my name's Andrew Pierce. I'm the CEO and founder of Thoughtful, an online greeting card marketplace. I'm here today to ask for £80,000 for 5% of my business. The, uh, the greet... Sorry, I've totally lost myself. I actually thought you'd just been thoughtful. <laughs> Did you know the online greeting card market is worth £1.6 billion in the UK 
per annum. And the innovation in this space hasn't really moved on since Moonpig launched over 10 years ago. That's where Thoughtful comes in. So Thoughtful is a marketplace where we allow anyone to design, create and upload their own content. And with every card that the, we sell on behalf of the creator, they receive 50p, which is a market leading royalty. Our mobile app allows people to navigate really quickly to relevant cards. You can even add your own handwriting. We've been running for 12 months. We have over 65,000 customers. In 2017, we predict that we'll do 1 million pound turnover. 2018, we're predicting we'll do 2.5 million turnover and 2019, 6.7 million turnover. I've got a couple of cards for, to, to hand around to you all. After a very nervous start, Andrew Pierce finds his feet and manages to finish his pitch. I hope I'm right with your card. Whoa. He's offering a 5% equity stake in his online greeting card business. <laughs> and seeking an £80,000 investment in return. Deborah Meaden wants to understand the shopping experience of Andrew's card clientele. Andrew, hi. There's actually a lot of places you can buy, obviously, online. There are lots cards. of places, yeah, Plenty yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. So if I went on your site today, it's yes. actually, actually, I can actually transact on absolutely. your site today. 100%. How many cards have you got? Active in our database is about 12,000. And how much do they cost? Uh, £2.99 plus postage. So you're literally giving me the same experience if I walked into a shop, picked a card up from a till, walked over to the till, Absolutely. paid for it, yep. and then stuck a stamp on it. Yes. OK, you've got your 50 pence that goes out, which is your commission. What else have you got in terms of cost of sales? Uh, so you've got credit card fee, printing and production. Um, so it's about £1. Currently, it's about £1.20-ish that we make per card. Deborah Meaden breaks down the figures and discovers a healthy markup on the business's products. But Jenny Campbell is wondering if the increasing use of social media might mean the writing is on the wall for a traditional card company. Andrew, is that card market going to decline over the years and people have stopped sending cards because they just post a message on Facebook or they send you a text and cards become a thing of the past, like handwritten letters have become a thing of the past? The card market is still growing, Jenny. So it, it's still growing uh, year on year. Um, I think it was 5% last year. Um, so, and, people, and we love giving and receiving cards in this country. Yeah, we're the biggest card giving nation in the world. Andrew, I'm not overly convinced that what you've pitched is anything unique yet. Have okay. I missed something? Because you can personalise using your own handwriting and, and upload today, can't you? Yes. So, OK, so yeah. what is it that you believe that you've got that's a real USP? The USP is that 70% of our content is not available on the high street. OK, which is... Uh, OK, that's fairly unique. So what have you spent on developing this app? Uh, to date, we spent about £1.5 million. <gasps> oh. How much? You spent one and a half million? Yes. Wow. Andrew, I'm now completely intrigued. Where did you get that money from? Uh, so, OK, so, uh, basically I've, I've run my own businesses before, before today. Uh, from about the age of 21, I set up my first business, which was a, uh, an outsourced call centre. And how much did you sell for? Uh, we sold that for 12.1 million. How much did you make? Uh, six. Wow. Um, so, and then after that, I thought, oh, why don't we try some conference calling? So something totally different. Okay, so you did that, and what did you sell that business for? Sold that for about 37 million. And how much did you make? Uh, about 15. You've made 21 million. Yep. And you clearly, you are a mega entrepreneur, no question about it. You should be sitting here. <sighs> Not quite yet. The revelation that there's a sixth multi-millionaire in the den has caught the attention of the dragons. But mega wealthy Tuka Suleiman appears more concerned with his £2.99 personalised card. Thank you for calling me. The old dragon. 
Now, <laughs> I'm gonna give you the old dragon. <laughs> Why are you here? You don't need to be here. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, the, the first reason for being here is I really need, I really would like a dragon to be on board to help us grow the business over the next two years. You could quite easily write a check out for 80,000 pounds and you won't blink. Absolutely. Correct, right, so you don't need the money. No. And you're not quite sure what you want from a dragon? I think further on down the line, in terms of raising additional fund funding, I, I'm 100% certain what I'm looking for with a dragon. Which is? Which is help networking, um, opening their black book to you know, different funding opportunities. Something that I've never done before because I've never raised any cash before. I'm not a banker. That's okay. No, you give me the ball. Yeah. Look, I think if a dragon puts in £80,000 for 5%, within two years, he'll be diluted down to about 1%. I hope it won't be a dilution to 1%. So having a dragon on board... Yes. ...will definitely add value to your business. Yeah, 100%. Right? And there's a price for that. So if I was going to invest in your business, I'd want to know that, that I won't be diluted. So can you, can you give me that guarantee? No, I can't give you that you guarantee. Can't. I can't give that guarantee today. OK. I'm not going to invest. I'm out. Thank you. Tuka Suleiman's concern that future investment will lead to some serious equity shrinkage makes him head for the door. And Deborah Meaden has an issue with the slice of the company that's up for grabs. In this business, I can see very quickly that you're going to get to a stage where you need millions. OK. Raising of that doesn't concern me at all. The bit that does bother me, that if I started anything close to the percentage that you're offering. I end up doing all of this work, bringing all of the funds in and ending up at the end of the day with a tiny, tiny, tiny piece. I want to own a, a chunky bit that keeps my attention. You are really good, but it's just not my style, so I, I won't be investing. I'm out. Okay. Look, you're obviously a smart guy and a very successful businessman, congratulations. Your previous business, how did you build your customer base in that? Exactly the same as I'm doing it now. Was it online? Yep. And when you sold the company, what were the sales of the company? 16 million. Right, and so you, you did that without any investment? Yep. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Um, I think it's a neat idea. But you're going to be diluting investors substantially by raising significant money, and that's concerning. Look, I will make you an offer. But I'll need to have a certain amount of equity for it to make any sense. And I'd probably be open to sharing this with another dragon. So my offer is half the money, £40,000, for 10% of the business. OK. Thank you for your offer. Tej Lalvani makes a move for the greeting card business. However, he's only offering half of the £80,000 the entrepreneur is asking for. Any deal requires another dragon, but just two have yet to declare. Time for Peter Jones to put his cards on the table. Andrew, you're the type of person I'd love to work with because I think it's good to work with somebody that clearly has entrepreneurial flair, talent, been there, done it, and actually is putting themselves on the line and having another go. But I'm really concerned for you with this business. This is a very, very, very tough business to get right without a huge amount of capital behind you. Andrew, I'm going to wish you well on your way and say that's the only reason why I'm out. Um, but many, many congratulations on your previous Thank success. You, Thank you, Peter. Peter Jones decides past riches don't outweigh future risk and declines a deal. Only Jenny Campbell remains. Her banking credentials could help to secure finance further down the line. Will she want in or opt out? So I guess I sit here, Andrew, thinking, come on, it's a drop in the ocean, that money to you, and you've done it all before. Really, do you need someone? 
And I certainly don't like the small piece of equity. But I'd like to be part of this journey. Yeah, because, I love that journey. because you've been so successful. And you know, you buy the person first and foremost, and you truly believe in this. And I like a good card. So I'm going to offer you half the money for seven and a half percent. Thank you, Jenny. Do you need to go and talk to the wall? Uh, no, not yet. I think I think that might be a bit later on. <laughs> but at the moment, there's not a deal that even works because at the moment, Jenny's on seven and a half percent, and you're on ten, and I would like you both on two and a half each. So, what sort of deal can be structured that works for you guys and works um, works for me as well? Well, I mean, look. What I can do is I could drop it down to 6% uh, when the money was paid back. I would have to say, no, that, that doesn't work for me. Anything more than 10% for me today is something that I'm very, very definite that I don't think we should do. OK. But I think, you know, a 10% is a good percentage and a good slug of equity in this business. Let's meet halfway. 8% dropping down to 5.5% each once our money's paid. I, I just don't think, I, I, I have to stick to my guns here and I think it's, it's, it's has to be, tell you what, let me go and have a think on that one. Yeah, I think yeah, you should. I think. And uh, Jenny, you would match that as well, would you? Yes. Okay. All right, I'll have that. Tej Lalvani and Jenny Campbell's revised offer of a collective 16% reducing down to 11 once their investment is repaid, is still more than the maximum the entrepreneur is willing to give away. Will he agree to the Dragon's terms or walk away from the deal? Tage, Jenny, I would like to accept your offers. Good decision. Wow. After a battle of attrition in the den, the Vitamins boss and banking kingpin unite to seal a deal. And the entrepreneur departs with the £80,000 investment he was seeking. The overall feeling is joy that it's finished. Boom! It's a lot more nerve-wracking in there than you think, actually. You're right to push for the little bit extra because you're going to be seriously diluted. I'm really excited to have Jenny and Tage on board. With their backgrounds, we will grow to a six and then hopefully go into £12 million business over the next few years.